the Stream Deck may be one of the most interesting tech devices out on the market right now. It's was originally designed for streamers and setting up cameras and angles and playing sound effects and triggering graphics and all sorts of different things, but it can actually be one of the most powerful productivity tools out there. Now, by no means am I the first person to turn the Stream Deck into a productivity device. I There have been a ton of people that have done this before me, but I wanted to make a video talking about how I'm using it because you, you guys all know me, you know I definitely favor shortcuts and that kind of automation, so I think I might bring a unique perspective to this. Now, right up front, I will say the only thing that really bums me out about the Stream Deck is it just works on the Mac or PC. It does not work on the iPad. Um, it's one of the reasons why I haven't gotten one until now, uh, because you know I, I'm using this MacBook Pro a bit more for video editing and stuff like that. Uh, but my primary computer is the iPad Pro, so I can't use it with that, and that's just a bummer. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. So what is the Stream Deck? The Stream Deck is, the best way to think about it is it's a programmable keyboard. So you have a bunch of buttons, you can program what each button does, you can trigger different applications or automations, all sorts of different things by a push of a button. So think of it as a programmable keyboard. Now there's three different versions of the Stream Deck. There's a six button one, a 15 button one, and a 30 button one. I think the 15 button one is the sweet spot. I think for a vast majority of people, that is the one you wanna get. Six buttons, that's not a lot. You're gonna run out of space really quickly. I didn't even realize how much stuff I wanted to put on this thing. And to be honest, I'm still playing with it. I don't think I am done at all, but I'm at a point where I wanted to make a video about the stuff that I, I have on here. The 30 button one would be nice if you have like a bunch of hardware connected, like you're doing a massive stream. Uh, my brother does a lot of live video production stuff. So so I could see him using the 30 button one. That would be cool for him. But for somebody like me that just sits at my desk, the 15 button one is like the perfect balance. So my stream deck sits right underneath my monitor, right behind my keyboard. So when I'm typing, I can just easily reach up and push a button right on the stream deck. And the way this works is the stream deck has software that runs either on your Mac or your PC. And you use this software to configure what each button does. Now, stream deck has its own store that you can download different plugins for. For it. You can download um, icon packs, sound effects, music, all sorts of different things for it. You can go through this store. Uh, I'm going to talk about the stuff that I'm using, but if you do get one, I highly recommend just spending some time going through the store and seeing what's there. To set up a plugin on the Stream Deck, you just drag it from the side panel and place it on whatever button you want configured. Now, you'll notice on my Stream Deck, it looks a little different than the default ones. That is because I created custom buttons for almost every single one of the plugins that I am using. I used a Mac application called Button Creator. What's cool about this is it uses uh, like SF symbols, and so there's a, a, a plethora of symbols to pick from. Then you could do colored backgrounds. Uh, you could do like a solid color background or a gradient color. I did gradients to kind of just give it a little bit of a flavor, kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, and I, I think this looks really nice, but you could also do things where you just made it like a black background with just like a white icon or something like that if you just wanted a really simple, clean look. All right, so let's get into what I have here. So the first row of icons on my Stream Deck is actually dedicated to Apple Music. Now, there is a plugin right from the Stream Deck store for Apple Music or Spotify, depending on which one you want. Now, I can't really talk about the Spotify one because I don't use Spotify, I just use Apple Music. I imagine they're pretty similar, uh, but I'm just gonna focus on the Apple Music one, but no, if you're a Spotify subscriber, there is a Spotify option on the store. So I use these for playback controls. So the first button is to skip back to, you know, go back to the beginning of the song or the previous song. Then there's play pause. And what's cool about this one is the way this works is when it's playing a song, the play button actually changes and it shows the album artwork of the song that is playing. Now, if you hit that, it pauses the song and it gives you a little play icon. So when you tap that, it'll resume playing and it'll show that album artwork again. Then the next button is skip song, so it'll go to the next song. Then there is shuffle. I can either turn on or off shuffle from here. And then there is a love button, so I can tap that and it'll either love the song or unlove the song. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is an excellent VPN service. In fact, I've used dozens of VPN services and it's my absolute favorite. 
As a former network admin, I know how important it is to use a VPN, especially when you're like connecting to public Wi-Fi and like coffee shops and stuff like that. It's incredibly easy to snoop on people's wireless traffic. Like most of the people that are setting that stuff up, they don't know about firewalls or keeping devices separate so they can't talk to each other on the same network. So, you know, you're, you don't really know what you're connecting to. So that's why I recommend using a VPN and Surfshark is my favorite for that. A VPN just helps protect your personal information. Information. With Surfshark, you get a fast, reliable connection, and it really is. I don't see a massive hit in bandwidth traffic at all. Like when I have it on versus when it's off, I don't notice a difference. And there's also no device cap, so that means I can load it up on my iPhone, iPad, Mac, any future computers I get, no device cap. That's really awesome. So you can pick between having a really fast connection, so like a server close by, or connecting to another country, so you can see what streaming services have to offer in other countries. I highly recommend Surfshark. Use my link in the description below to get 83% off and an extra three months for free. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Then the next two buttons are for system level audio. This uses the audio switcher plugin from the Stream Deck store. So the first lets me switch between my speakers and my AirPods Max. So when you set this up, you can configure input or output. So in this case, it would be output. And you can select two different sources for output. So I selected the speakers that are on my monitor, which are not good. I'm not advocating for them in any way. They're just convenient to play something back quickly for. And then my AirPods Max. So when I tap that, it'll connect to my AirPods Max and start playing audio through there. That one's the one I use the most. So I just switch to that one. Uh, but it is convenient to be able to play something if like somebody's in my office and I want to play something back or if I like my AirPods are dead and I just want to watch a video or something really quick. So the next button uses the same audio devices plugin, but uses the set audio device action. This allows me to quickly make sure my input device, so the microphone that I'm using is my good fancy podcast mic. So if I have a video call or a meeting, I can make sure I'm using the good mic and not like the microphone built into the MacBook. So the next button is countdown timer. Now this one is not available on the Stream Deck store. This is actually something I downloaded from GitHub. So you can absolutely install third party software from other sources. It doesn't have to just be from the Stream Deck store, kind of nice. So what this does is it's a Pomodoro timer. I'm sure most people watching this video are familiar with what a Pomodoro timer is, but if you aren't, basically the idea about it is you set like a 20 minute timer for you to work, then you set like a five minute or 10 minute timer to take a break. Then you set like a 30 minute timer to work and like so on and so on. Like you you work, take a break, work, take a break. So that's what this does is it, it's a way to quickly set a timer right from the stream deck. You can tap it to increase the, the time length. It goes in five minute increments up to 60 minutes. Uh, and then when it goes off, it, it plays an alarm and the alarm is very startling. It freaked me out the first time it went off. You can follow the readme file that's in the GitHub uh, source, like uh, in all the source material. You can follow the readme file and you can change out the alarm for something that's a lot less startling. It Honestly, it did scare me. Now, I also ran across a bug with this and it only happened to me once. I've used it a bunch and it only happened to me once. I was not able to reset the timer when it went off. I do recommend reading the readme file because it tells you how to like reset everything and increase things and stuff like that and I wasn't able to reset it. So I actually had to end up rebooting my Mac in order to turn it off. It's only happened to me once, hasn't happened to me since then. Um, so I don't, I don't know, I don't know what, what the cause of that was. But I like this as a way to kind of just like, okay, this 20 minute, 30 minute block of time, I am focused on work. Then I'll take like a 10 minute break, go walk around, grab something to eat, drink, whatever, and, and then get back to work and I can set that timer. And you know, as I'm working, I can look down and see how much time is left and be like, nope, I still got 10 minutes left, 15 minutes left, whatever. I still gotta, you know, keep working, keep pushing. I'll, I'll put a link to where you can get this in the description below, along with everything else that I can link to. I'm not entirely sure I can link to stuff in the Stream Deck store, so you might just have to search for these things. So the next two buttons are actually system-wide keyboard shortcuts. They're for drafts and things. 
Both of these applications have system-wide keyboard shortcuts for either triggering a new task or a new draft respectively. So for things I have set up control space. I don't remember if this is default or if I set that up. I, I don't remember, it's been a little bit. Um, but I have it set up so that anywhere in Mac OS, I can hit control space and I get the new task dialog and I can just type in a new task. Well, I set up that button in the Stream Deck. I use the hotkey plugin. So you tell it what keyboard shortcuts to trigger when you push it. So in this case, it triggers control space when I push that. Then I get the new task pop up and I can just type in whatever new task I want and it gets added to things. Then I have one that does the same thing for drafts. Control Shift D creates a new draft in drafts from anywhere in Mac OS. It gives me a little pop up. I can type in the note, idea, whatever that's in my head. I can type that in and save it off to drafts. So I use the hotkey plugin for this as well push that button, get that dialogue, can type whatever I want. Now, these aren't hard keyboard shortcuts to remember, but since I primarily work from the iPad, I do forget them quite often. So that's why I find having them on the Stream Deck to be helpful. So there's a few different ways when it comes to the Stream Deck to get more out of your Stream Deck than the number of buttons you have. So in my instance, I have the 15 button one. I can install more than 15 plugins on my Stream Deck. And there's a few different ways to do that. So the first one is pages. So I can put multiple pages on my stream deck and just cycle through them. You know, you just use the arrow keys to jump back and forth between them. It works, it's fine. But I, I find just having one page to be kind of the sweet spot. That's what I personally like. So what I use is folders. I really like folders because like on a computer, you can use a folder to put more data in. And in, in fact, you can put a folder and a folder and a folder if you really want. Um, but I use folders to put more plugins in there. There's also profiles on the Stream Deck. And what profiles do is really interesting. If you create a page that's specific for an application. So I've seen people do this for Notion, Final Cut, Lightroom, whatever. I'm kind of working on a Final Cut and Lightroom version. But what's cool about profiles is you can set it up to attach to a certain application. So let's just use Final Cut for instance. So when I open up Final Cut, it then opens up the profile on the Stream Deck that's associated with Final Cut. So I can have all my Final Cut shortcuts right in front of me. Kind of cool if you're like really big into certain applications and you wanna have those things there. But like I said, I personally like folders. Folders you manually jump into and then you can go back a level. You can also put a folder in a folder if you want. Uh, so the next two icons on the top level of my Stream Deck are folders. The first ones are for a variety of different shortcuts I use throughout my day. This folder is not full. It's just meant so that I can just dump things in here as I find like a shortcut like, hey, this shortcut would work really well in here. Then I could put it in there. I'm not trying to like max things out and like make it all pretty because I used up every space. Now there is a plugin you can use to run shortcuts and it's right in the Stream Deck store and it sort of works. Uh, it's, it's really easy to configure. You literally just pick the shortcut you wanna run and associate with it and when you hit the button it runs the shortcut. But I'm not sure if this was the plugin, the Stream Deck or the Mac or shortcuts on the Mac or what, but I found those buttons to get disconnected. They stopped being associated with the shortcut that I would pick. And I'm not entirely sure why. So what I did is I went through the shortcuts app, selected a shortcut, went into file, and then select add to doc. This will then take that shortcut and turn it into a dot app file. So this puts that shortcut in your dock. You can actually just drag it out of your dock. We don't, what we're gonna use this for, we do not need it in the dock, just drag it right out of there. But if you go into your user folder, so in my instance, my user folder is Christopher Lolly, there will be an applications folder right at the top and all of those shortcuts will live in there. They don't live in the normal applications folder because that's for all the users on your computer. Shortcuts, since they're associated with your iCloud account, they're just limited to um, your users. So that's why they're in the user specific folder. So what I did instead of using the plugin that was made specifically for shortcuts, I use the built in open plugin. Now this is for opening applications or files or whatever. And then I just browsed to the path of that shortcut, selected it, put it in there. I, I gave it a nickname for the shortcuts just because there, there can be a lot of these in the future. Um, I didn't put nicknames on anything on the top level, but I figured in folders, it was fine. And then I also gave them all custom icons. This works 100% of the time, as opposed to doing the other plugin way that was designed for shortcuts. This wor this is solid, works 100%. I haven't had any issues with it. So 
it does take a little bit longer to set up, but I would highly recommend going this way just because it seems to work so much better. Okay, so the shortcuts that I have in this folder, if you've watched like my shortcuts video or the what's on my iPad video, none of these are new, uh, but I will just quickly mention what I have here. I have audio cut, it's my music player shortcut. Money cut, it's what I use for expense tracking and income tracking for my business. Snippet cut, it's my snippet manager. I mostly use this on the iPad and the iPhone. I use um, Alfred snippet manager for the Mac, but every once in a while there isn't something in Alfred that is in the snippet cut, so I just grab it from there. Then app link, this is when I'm doing the descriptions for videos and gathering all the apps and stuff like that. I use this shortcut to quickly get links from the app store. Uh, publish new video is a shortcut I run when I publish new video. New video project is a shortcut I ha run when I have a new video idea. And then drafts link. This allows me to get the UUID, the basically the, the, the X callback URL for a draft, allows me to get that and then I can paste it wherever so I can link things together more easily. So that's the shortcuts folder. The next folder is specifically for time tracking. Now this is actually also full of shortcuts as well. Um, I use toggle as the backend for my time tracking. And there is a toggle plugin for Stream Deck but it's really limited. Like there's no tagging option or anything like that. And it's just for like start time tracking new projects. So if that's all you're doing, it, it'll work really well. You don't need to go the shortcuts route. But if you want a little more detail, I use Timery for all of my time tracking. It's the front end for all my time tracking and it has excellent shortcut support. So what I did was I went in and made shortcuts for every project and tag that I time track. So for example, video project writing or video project filming or video project editing or photo editing or um, administration or research or whatever. I went in and made all of those and then created those shortcuts, did the add to doc thing and then put them in this folder. I also created a stop all time tracking sh shortcut, did the same thing. This as you can probably figure out, stops all the time tracking. And then I have two report shortcuts that I can run from here, one for the day and one for the week. So I can kind of see what I've spent my time on for the day and what I spent my time on for the week. The next button uses the multi-action plugin. So what's cool about this is this one plugin allows you to actually run multiple plugins with the push of one button. So this is my startup launcher. I use this when I turn on my Mac, if my Mac has been shut off or I restart my Mac for whatever reason, I hit this one button and it opens up all the applications I use and also runs my time tracking shortcut, my general one that like prompts me for like, hey, what are you working on and stuff like that. Really cool, really handy for like just sitting down and opening everything up really quickly. You could also add files to that. So like if you have a file you need open throughout your day, you can add that there. Um, just kind of a cool startup way to like hit one button and just have everything open. Then we have mode cut. This is another shortcut I talked about in my what's on my iPad video, uh, but this is a shortcut that's constantly evolving. This is for triggering different focus modes. So focus is a big feature that came out with iPad OS 15 and the new version of Mac OS and iOS 15, all, all that stuff. I've talked about it a bunch already, but this is a shortcut that allows me to trigger different focuses. And depending on which focus I pick, it also triggers other shortcut actions. So this could be playing music to my home pods or uh, AirPods or start the uh, new app Ouchie, which is kind of a app blocking uh, service. I talked about it in a previous video I'll link to, or it could just be time tracking stuff that it starts. It's, it's a really interesting shortcut that I use a lot throughout the day. I push this when I'm shifting modes and I can start different time tracking and block different things. And then the last button is reset mode. This just turns off all the focus stuff, turns off time tracking, turns off ouchie, turns off everything, and just kind of puts my devices back in the default state. So that's what I'm doing with my Stream Deck. Now there's a ton of different stuff you can do with it. I'm still playing around with it. If you guys like this video, let me know and I'll make more videos about it in the future with what I do with the Stream Deck because I don't feel like I'm finished with it at all, but I just felt like it was at a good state to make a video about. But like you can do home automation stuff. You can do stuff with Keyboard Maestro. You could do, like I talked about profiles, like I'm working on a Final Cut profile. I'll probably do a Lightroom profile as well. Um, there's a lot you can do. So I think the Stream Deck is just a really interesting device. Um, I, I, I honestly believe you could. there's a lot you can do with it. I just wish it worked on the iPad. Mm, if it worked on the iPad, whew, that would be cool. That would be really cool. 
But that's it. Let me know if you have a Stream Deck, let me know in the comments below what you're using it for, or if you intend to get a Stream Deck, what you would like to use it for. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.